this album. I've had a chance to take a listen to it, and it's an absolutely fantastic album. So congratulations. Well, thank you much. So was there something that you guys were setting out to achieve with this album? Because, like I said, it's such a great album that it's got a great new sound, but also has the old sound there as well that we so wanted to hear. Was there something that you guys set out to achieve with this album? You know, um, that's kind of what we always like, is that sound. We've never really gotten it exactly, but I think we got really close to what we've been hunting for our whole careers, basically, uh, production-wise and sound-wise. Yeah. Did you do something different this time around? Was there a reason why you think you were so close to that sound that you've always wanted, or did it just happen to fall out that way? You know, I think just in the last, uh, you know, in the last two records for this one, we were getting really close to what we have always kind of heard, but couldn't really bring across. Um, and this time in I think we pretty much hit it on the head, thanks to Jacob Hansen, who did all the mixing and mastering. So tell us a little bit about putting this album together. It's been such a crazy 12 months over the over the last year. How did you guys actually get together to work on the album and also to record it as well? This was a lot of uh, file sharing between our houses. Um which we don't, you know, it's not really the way we'd like to do things, but it works. And because of COVID, we had a lot of extra time to go through these songs. And it's a good thing because they wrote me another 35 songs or something to choose from. So um, we did have a lot of time to pass files back and forth and, you know, give each other comments about, hey, you need to change this sound a little bit or this sounds a little, you know, tin canny or whatever. And we kind of, um, you know, kind of super focus everybody's parts and everybody's sound. We had the luxury of doing that. We didn't need to too much, but we had the luxury of being able to. Yeah. You mentioned having 35 tracks there. How do you go about picking which tracks make it onto the albums and which ones don't? Because that must be like picking a favorite child, really. Yeah, you know, um, the End of Chaos album, I think I had 42 songs to choose from. And um, these guys, they, they get on a mission of writing tunes and they're sending me you know, one every day for weeks each. And it's it gets to be where I have to kind of remember which song um, I was humming in my head for the rest of the day or something like that. And then those are the ones I go back to and work on a little bit. Um, sometimes they turn out great, and sometimes we end up trashing them anyway, and we'll work on something that's better but um you know in in this case we had a lot of uh you know all thriller and no filler songs to go through yeah (laughs) so what happens to those tracks that go by the wayside do you revisit them at some stage down the track because gone are the days when we used to have b-sides and things on singles so what happens to those tracks these days um, we always say that we're going to use these songs either for the next album or some kind of EP or just some singer or something. We're going to do something with them and we never do. Um, we go to write the next album and those guys have turned in another 25, 30 songs that are brand new. So it's hard to go back to something that didn't make it to a record. If you've got another 30 new, brand new ones, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it kind of worked the same with our set list live. Um, you know, we have 150 songs or whatever recorded that we have to choose to put on a set list. And you can only put 
you know, maybe max 16, 17 songs for an hour and a half set, you know. So the first thing we turn to is stuff that everybody in the band had something to do with or at least already knows or something. And we start there. And then I start pulling out, you know, obscure stuff that I don't like to play. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned that this album is an album full of thrillers. This, and that is so true. Like the title track, that just grabbed me when I first listened to it. And I thought this is going to become an absolute classic. What was that like for you listening to those tracks and realizing that they were absolutely spectacular? Yeah, that one was, um, that one took a while to get under my skin, I think. It was one of the later tracks that we recorded, and it was something, you know, we had the whole album written, and it was up with, oh, hey, let's, let's, you know, do something with this thing, and it turned out the way it did, and it's like, wow, um, Okay, I guess next time we won't settle with what we have and keep going because you know that was one of Ken's songs and it's uh, it turned out really really good. Yeah, this is also the first uh, album with Bill in the band as well. Tell us a little bit about what he's like to work with and why you felt he was the perfect guy to come into the band. You know, Bill did some uh, touring with us. He was a fill-in for Michael Spencer and did a lot of U.S. stuff with us. So we knew we can get along with the guy. We knew that he's a great bass player. Uh, the only thing we didn't know was uh, how he can write. It's because we've never written with him before. So when we, we gave these songs to Bill and... We didn't give him any idea, really, of what we wanted the bass to do or what we were hearing. We just gave him to him bassless and said, here you go, come up with something. And I don't think we had one note for the guy as far as criticism or change this or anything. I think it was, wow, recording. Yeah. And um, I think we got really lucky with him. Do you, do you get worried when you bring a new member of the band in? Because a band is like a family, and it's like bringing in a new family member. So does it make you nervous each time you've got to bring someone new in like that? You know, I think it, it takes a little little tiny chunk of my soul every time I lose a member. Um, you know, I've been through so many bass players and drummers and guitar players over the years that you know, anymore, uh, uh, instead of getting bummed about it or thinking, oh, here we go again, i got to start back on ladder rung number one all over again. But I, I try to uh, just concentrate on the positives. And really, this new lineup has been nothing but positive since, um, you know, since Bill's been in the band. Yeah, yeah. So, talking about those positives, where to now for the band? Like you said, you guys are sounding better than ever. Um, what next is for the band? Are you guys at the point now where you're allowed to open back up over there and start doing shows, or where are you at at the moment? Because we're just coming out of lockdown again here, so where are you at with that? We are... Um, we're going to try to do a couple weeks in the US in August, and then... Uh, we have really not too much until January. We start the Accept Tour in Europe. So, um, really between now and then, we're just hoping everything calms down and people start opening up their venues again. And, you know, we had this huge U.S. tour booked. And, you know, the way our tours work if we have one show canceled we're kind of screwed you know yeah so we had more than 50 percent of the venues that we were that closed down permanently so that pretty much tore our tour in half you know and we just decided let's let's just regroup and take the break with the rest of the world and uh 
you know, we'll, we'll make this up later. And yeah. that's what gave, gave us all the time to uh, get the assault on the world with the new record all ready to go. Yeah. When you say that those venues have closed down permanently, do you see them ever coming back in some form? Because I, we've been talking here today on the show about this is the worst thing that's ever happened to the Australian music scene. How bad has it been there in America? And do you think that some of those venues will bounce back in some form or are they gone forever? That's, um, that's a hard one to, to tell at this point, I think. Um, so far, all I've noticed it's done is some of the really cool venues that uh, weren't just like a sports bar, they're actually a, a venue. Um, some of the really cool ones to play have closed down. There's still... You know, two crappy ones and a mediocre one to play at. But, you know, the really cool ones have closed down. And there's a lot of that that's gone on everywhere. So there's still places to play. There's still places open. They're still, you know, waiting for everything to open up so they can start having rock shows again. But, you know, some of them just couldn't financially hang on. So yeah, if we just lost those... Hopefully, you know, it'll all come back with a vengeance. Definitely. And you must be excited about playing these new tracks live. Like we said, these tracks sound absolutely amazing. So you must be generally excited about being able to get out there and play them live. I'm very excited because I like uh, doing the challenging stuff live. But I'm also very scared. I haven't even sang Happy Birthday in over a year now. So I'm... <laughs> I'm uh, a little out of shape at the moment, but I've got plenty of time before I have any uh, real singing to do. Yeah. So how do you get ready for that? Do you just start doing a lot of rehearsals? Do you start practicing on your own? How do you get stage ready again? Um, I, for a couple of months, at this point, for a couple of months before I have to do anything, I have this strange ritual of going to drinking nothing but water. And if I'm not singing, stretching out, rehearsing or something, I'm at least humming. I walk around hum all the time. And I just do that basically 24 hours a day until it's time for me to need to sing. And then I'm pretty much warmed up. Awesome. Well, mate, I know we are running out of time and we cannot wait to see you guys playing live with these new tracks. So I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today. And is there anything you would like to say to your Australian fans out there before they go out and grab a copy of this album? Uh, you know, Flotsam and Jetsam is not going anywhere. So get your uh, album collection started. There's 14 of them you can collect by now, and there may be another 14 before we're finished. So uh, <laughs> go out and buy the collection. Definitely. That is great advice. Well, mate, I'll let you go. Have a great night, but thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you, bro. Not a problem at all. And um, yeah.